Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I do an inlaid seat in a saddle. This is one of the saddles that we've been working on. We've mentioned it in our Monday morning briefings before and stuff, but we're really trying to get this saddle out of here as quick as possible now that we're back in the shop and, and uh, coming into fall before Christmas hits. But as you can see here, we've already installed the inlaid seat in this saddle. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. I don't use any kind of padding in these, in these inlaid seats. Um, I just don't like the way the saddle sets when there is padding in there. And so we opt to always do it without. Plus we'll go ahead and tool this um, with his brand in it and some other stuff in there. And uh, but, uh, but other than that, this saddle will sit exactly like a hard seated saddle. It will not have any change in it. If you do one of these, it doesn't change how the saddle sets at all and the customer doesn't even know it's there. And so it's a really good deal. But let's hop right into the video and I'm gonna show you how I do an inlaid seat in a saddle right quick. All right, so right here, I've got a couple center marks just real lightly there in the seat. So I know where the center of the seat is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use a pattern. You can cut this shape any way you want. Um, this is just kind of a real common shape that we use on all of our inlays. And I'm gonna go ahead and just trace that off using the center lines on the pattern and the center lines on the seat. And that'll tell us where the seat is gonna be. And so the main thing here is you just wanna make sure that your pattern is centered. And so I'll kind of check that with the tape. It should be based on our center marks. And now we're gonna sharpen our knife. Before we cut this hole, we wanna be sure that your knife is as sharp as possible. So you wanna be sure and get a good edge on your blade, and then we're gonna strop that as well on our stropping board, and that way we know that we've got a nice, clean, buffed edge that we can make a nice, clean cut with and not have any issues. So now the first cut that I'm gonna make, I'll usually start there at the top, and I'm gonna just really score that and take my time if you've got to make three four five passes that's fine but just take your time and just real gently start begin to make your cut and just keep cutting until you get all the way through then we can bury the knife in that cut and then follow it around and we want to be sure that your cut is perpendicular to the material so don't let your blade angle at all whatever that the uh, surface of the material is you want to be perpendicular to that with that cut when you get to these corners like that you can angle the blade kind of the point of the blade towards you on the bottom and that way you can cut in that really sharp corner there without overcutting All right, so now we've got our plug cut out, and now we're gonna go ahead and cut our material. I'm going to tool this seat, so we're just gonna take a piece of three, four. You want a nice firm piece, don't cut it out of the belly where it's all shaggy or anything, but we're gonna go ahead and cut this, and I'm gonna oversize cut it probably about an inch, inch and a half, something like that. You need plenty of feather hanging out um, after we shape this and put it in so that we can sew it in place. You can do this exact same seat with an exotic leather like an ostrich or an alligator or caiman, something like that. You can also do a split leather and do a stitch pattern if you'd like. And if you're gonna add foam, you can definitely cut your foam and glue it to this pet plug as well, but we're not gonna use any foam in ours. Um, and so we'll go ahead and get that piece cut. And like I said, that's just a piece of three, four ounce Herman Oak leather. And then we're gonna go ahead and sky the edge of this really nice and flat. And that way we don't have any kind of bumps or lumps underneath our seat whenever we put this in. So we'll just real lightly just sky about a, I don't know, three quarters of an inch in, just a nice long feathered taper there and just get that skived up. As far as the plug, we do not sand that. Don't sand it or scribe or try to take some off so that you can compensate for the material thickness. Leave it alone. Just don't, I don't even sand it at all to shape it up. You need to make sure that your first cut is good, but then we will edge it. And I'll use a number three edger just to edge the top so that the leather makes a nice smooth roll over the edge of that. Um, but I, I do not sand or take any of the material off. I find that it'll tighten up the seat and really fill the hole. The times that we've tried to sand that a little bit, we've ended up with some gaps in the seat um, around the edge of that. So don't, don't do anything to it other than just edge the top piece of that. Now we've got our liner and our plug. We're gonna go ahead and put a good coat of glue on here. I do three coats on this, two to three coats, depending on how your leather's reacting to the glue, but get it glued well. And then on the plug, when you glue it, you're gonna glue the top and then also all along around the edge. Don't glue the back of it, but you're gonna glue around the edge because we want that leather to stick when we, when we form it to that. 
Now here, while that's drying, we'll go ahead and take our seat and we'll lightly sand the hole. This is just to kind of shape it up and get it ready to edge slick. And so we're just going to real lightly just sand around in there. Try not to misshape or take too much off to where you change the shape of that hole because here's here's where you'll get those gaps around uh, when you put that plug back in. So just be sure and just real lightly sand it just enough to get a nice edge slicking on that. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and groove this and edge it. So now I'm just going to take my groover and just groove our stitch line. It's a lot easier to do it right now than when the seat's in there. So go ahead and go ahead and groove it if you are going to groove your stitch line. And now here I'm just going to take a number three or a number four, whatever you prefer, and I'm just going to edge the top. Don't edge the bottom, but we'll just edge the top of this hole because we're all going to slick that and dye it and all that kind of stuff. And so we'll go ahead and edge that right there. And then we'll go ahead and get to slicking that with our, uh, our normal slicking edge slicking process. We do have a video on showing you how to slick edges, so you can certainly go back and check that out. Now, as you notice, I did not edge the bottom with an edger, but you do want to go through here and just kind of check it out. If you got a little lump, you can take a number two or something, or even a skyman knife and just take off any little bump. Sometimes when you slick and don't edge the bottom, you'll get a little lump there. Now our pieces have had a chance to dry, um, and we're going to go ahead and put a second coat on here. Like I said, I usually I'll throw a third coat on that is very light, very thin, just to freshen up the glue before we move forward. But we're going to go ahead and put another coat on all along those edges of that plug as well. All right, so our glue is tacky on our liner piece that we're gonna cover with. So now we're just gonna go ahead and soak that in water. You can definitely, anytime you've got to wet something and glue it uh, with wet leather, you wanna put your glue on first on the dry leather, let that dry and get tacky. Then you can soak it in the water and then wipe off any excess water on the glue side and the glue will hold, it'll still glue well. If you try to put glue on wet leather, it usually doesn't work very well, it'll peel off the leather. So you always wanna glue first, wet second. So that's what we're going to do. We want to get a nice good soak on that so that leather is very pliable and very um, able to, to manipulate to make it fit on that plug. And so now we'll just take some dry paper towels and dry off any any uh, glue that might or water that might be in that glue. Go ahead and get that dried off. If your glue doesn't feel very tacky at this point, you can add a freshen coat, which will just be a really thin coat of glue. Brush that on and that'll liven that glue back up so that it sticks. But we're pretty good right here, it's pretty sticky. So now we'll take our plug and we're gonna put it on, we'll put it right in the middle because we need that feather. And what I like to do is just glue the top just enough to where I can pick both of those up together and then keep that shape to your plug. Don't flatten your plug out but just kind of roll that on there so that you've still got that shape of the seat whenever it was pulled into the actual tree. And you want to go ahead and just start pushing that together. Make sure you kind of get that, that arc or that, that, that cup in there to where the plug is shaped naturally. And that'll help that, that glue in place. And then we want to just work along the edge and just real gently just kind of work it around there and get it to where it's starting to glue in place. And then we'll use a glass to go ahead and really bond that leather in that dish really, really well, get it glued, 
and then we'll use a uh, just a, a my slicking stick to get it bonded around the outer edge as you'll see in just a second. Now this piece of leather is getting just a little bit dry, so we're gonna go ahead and re-wet it with a spray bottle just to keep that leather nice and pliable. You wanna be able to shape this really well. You don't want your leather drying out on you while you're doing this, so don't be scared to add some water if it does start to dry out. So as you can see there, we've got a nice shape. We've got it coming all the way around over the edge, down to the base, which is our, our rock there, so that we're nice and flush on the backside. So now we've gotten a completely covered plug ready to be installed into the actual seat. Now what I like to do here is just to kind of fit my seat, make sure everything fit right, make sure the hole looks good, everything fits right. Um, we're going to go ahead and do that in the actual tree. So you want to put your seat in where it goes and then slip that inlay in up underneath there. And then I like to take a hammer and just kind of pound around there along the edge just to kind of seat that leather and uh, seat any differences I might have in that liner along the edge. And that seat will help you kind of do that and it'll fit nice and it gives you a chance too to make sure that you're edges are, um, or that the plug fits in there nicely without any gaps. After we do that, we're going to let this dry. We're going to let the padded seat dry, the inlaid seat dry, um, as well as the edge of the interior of that hole. And that way we can add some edge dye to that. So now our edges have had time to dry and uh, we're going to go ahead and dye the edges of the hole where the inlay's going and we're also going to dye the edges of the seat, the outer edge of the jockeys and stuff. We'll go ahead and do that now. Just be real careful. I'm using one of those uh, little dye pin things um, there that, that seem to be working good. I've got a good control with that, but you can also just use a dauber or whatever your, your best way of, of dyeing edges is. But just be very careful that you don't get dye somewhere that you don't want it.
All right, as you can see, our inlaid seat is, is all dry. It's completely dry. You wanna make sure it's dry really well. And then now we'll go ahead and put glue everywhere that the seat is gonna be, being very careful not to get it on the uh, portion of the seat that'll be sticking through the hole. So um, don't get it up along the edges too close, but you wanna glue close enough to where that hole will glue up nice and tight against the plug. And so we're gonna do two coats on this, and we're also gonna glue the seat here in just a second. So now I'm gonna take a rougher and just rough up that slick side. If you're doing a rough out seat, you're gonna have slick on the bottom, so you're gonna to wanna to rough that up so the glue sticks really well. If you're uh, doing a slick out seat, you're gonna have rough out on the bottom, so no need to scratch it really. But we'll go ahead and put another good, or put a good coat of glue here, and uh, we'll let both of those coats, the one on the plug and the one on this seat dry, then we'll come in with a second coat and we'll be able to, we'll be ready to glue that in. All right, our glue is dried and so it's nice and tacky. I like to start at those points on the seat. So the front part of the inlay and, and those two points, one on each side. I like to line those up first and then work my way towards the back. You wanna glue this in while it's in the tree. Don't try to glue this in out off of the tree on the bench or something. Just put your inlay in where it goes. It should be already where it is. Um, and then put your seat in over the top of that. And as you glue this thing in, be sure and push the edges of that hole up against that plug nice and tight everything should fit good we've already pre-fit everything but just glue it in there and those two points help to line everything up so that you get all that in uh, straight and not crooked but we're going to glue that in pushing it up against the plug and then we'll hammer that in place and we'll be ready to stitch it So now we can pull that out. You wanna be real tender with it. Make sure that the inlay's not stuck too much to the tree as you pull that out so you don't wanna make any wrinkles or anything. But as you can see, it's nice and flush with the rest of the seat. There's no rise in that, as well as the back is nice and smooth. We do have just a little bit of a, uh, of a bump right there where the uh, inlay material is coming across there. So we're gonna go ahead and skive that. Before we skive it though, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of baby powder on here. This is gonna do two things. One, it's gonna make it easier to skive that leather because it's got glue all over it. But it's also very important that you do this um, whenever you go to stitch it on your machine because if you don't, that glue will stick to the machine plate 
and then it'll cause it to the stitch length will be different and you'll just kind of struggle with it so you want to be sure and put baby powder on here um, to just kind of make that glue not sticky anymore when you sew it on your machine All right, so now we've got over here to the Cobra Class 4, which is what we're gonna sew this on. I don't put any kind of different plates or anything on there, but I do change to the right toe pressure foot. And we do that because the way, if you if you have the left on, you've gotta sew it kind of backwards where the bulk of the material is in the throat of the machine. And so I like to change to the right toe pressure foot so that the bulk of that seat will stay on the outside of the machine um, because you're, you're kind of sewing it differently. And so you'll kind of see that as you put that together. And take your time here sewing on the machine. Don't get in a big hurry. Be mindful of your stitch length that it's staying the same, that the material is feeding properly. If you didn't put enough baby powder on the back side of that seat, you still may feel a little bit of tackiness as it's trying to slide across the plate. So that's why it's important to use that baby powder. But just kind of take your time, don't get in a hurry, and uh, sew around there and make sure that everything's sewing properly. So there's our inlay, it's all sewn in. And we'll go ahead and cut these stitches here and just kind of check the seat, make sure everything looks good, make sure the stitches on the back side look good, um, that we don't have any issues or any problems. Everything should be smooth on the back side. And now it's all one unit, just like any other hard seat, and will be installed um, as such. It, there's no difference in that. There's no padding to deal with. There's, there's nothing um, different about this and a hard seat at this point now. And now we'll just set her in the tree and kind of halfway line her up, make sure everything looks good, make sure everything fits right and is centered and where we want it. All right, so that's our video on putting an inlaid seat in. It's not very difficult. You just need to take your time. Remember now, when you do that, when you cut out that plug, I don't, like I mentioned before, I don't sand any of that off. You would think that you would sand just a little bit of that off or maybe scribe around there and cut some of that off to compensate for the thickness of leather that you're putting in there. I found that when you do that, you're gonna end up with gaps. When you try to put that plug back in there, you're gonna end up with some gaps across there. I try to cut that as clean as possible with a nice sharp knife. You saw me sharpen my knife before we made that cut. You wanna make sure your blade is, is optimal and you wanna make that cut just smooth and clean and perpendicular to the leather. So don't angle your blade either way. You want it straight up and down. If you make that cut nice and clean, you can lightly sand the hole but don't sand the plug. Leave the plug full thickness when you put your leather over the top of it. Whether you're gonna use an exotic or if you're gonna use the veg tan leather because you're gonna tool it or a, maybe a split, you're gonna do a stitch pattern, something like that. Whatever material you're gonna use, it's going to compensate for any little subtleties in there and the movement in the material thickness when you put that plug back in, I think it just tightens that hole up, tightens up the entire seat, makes that inlated where you don't have any gaps. So I don't suggest sanding that at all if you want to sand the inside of the hole a little bit just to clean it up, that's fine. But don't get too crazy. Don't take too much off. But inlays, they're, they're not really hard. They're, they're kind of fun. And if you're going to tool them, it gives you another spot just to add some more decoration. And uh, I, think, I think it's a really neat look. And like I said, it's going to sit just like a hard seat. In the next video, I'm going to show you exactly how I glue these seats in. Once the seats are done, they're ready to install into the saddle. I'll show you how I do that. And that way you'll kind of know how to take the next step or maybe just another option on how to glue the seats in. Everybody's got a different way of doing it. So we'll see you in the next video.